ChatGPT is an AI text artificial intelligence bot that you can ask all sorts of questions to and it'll respond back to you in the form of a conversation. So I figured that since this is a music based channel, I'm going to ask ChatGPT a bunch of music questions and see if it can respond accordingly and if it's correct. First of all, this is a text based AI and I actually tried earlier to compose music based on the chat GPT model, but it's only text. So if you're trying to write music, you're out of luck. You can't do it on this a platform. Let's ask chat GPT some music questions, shall we? So what is the first question that I have in mind? Let's start with the first question that comes to mind. What is classical music? Let's see what kind of response it gives us. All right, here we go. We have a response. Classical music is a broad term that typically refers to music produced in or rooted in the traditions of Western art, ecclesiastical and concert music, particularly that of Europe and the Western world from the medieval era to the present. It can include genres such as opera, symphonic, chamber, choral, and solo instrumental music. Classical music is typically performed by trained musicians, often in formal concert settings. So first of all, that's scary. Two, a, th this AI chat GPT is right. Classical music is in fact a broader term and it's not like one specific piece of music is classical music. That's like a broad range of, you know, like that kind of classifies as like all the genres in under one umbrella, but a the AI is right. There are such genres such as opera, such as symphonic repertoire, such as chamber music, chorale. Those are all different genres within the umbrella of classical music. That's kind of scary, but let's let's continue having this conversation. Let's ask it a more complex question, maybe something violin related. Let's ask what are the different types of bow holds violinists can use? Let's that's a very specific question. Let's see if this chat GPT will answer. Okay, there are several different types of bow holes that violinists can use, including the French, German, and Russian bow holes. The French bow hold is characterized by the hand being positioned high on the stick of the bow with the fingers close together and curved. The thumb is positioned on the back of the bow stick with the index finger resting on the frog. The German bow hold is similar to the French, but the hand is positioned slightly lower on the bow stick and the fingers are more spread out. The thumb is positioned on the back of the bow stick and the index finger is also positioned at the frog. The Russian bow hold is characterized by the hand being positioned lower on the bow stick and the fingers are more spread out and relaxed. The thumb is positioned on the side of the bow stick and the index finger is positioned on the frog. There's also a hybrid bow hold, which is a combination of the French and German bow holds. It is characterized by the hand is positioned somewhere between the French and German bow holds. The fingers are more spread out and relaxed. Ultimately, the choice of bow hold is a personal one and many professional violinists use a combination of these different holds depending on the context. So is this correct? That's the question. Not entirely. So there are different types of bow holds, Russian, German, uh, Franco-Belgian, you know, the French is also something that you can do. So there are different types of bow holds. I think the AI is correct that there are three different types, French, Russian, and German. I would say that it, at the end, there is a hybrid bow hold, and that is the Franco-Belgian bow hold. That's something that I teach on this channel, and that is something that I talk about all the time to having, you know, spread out fingers and having a bendy thumb, making sure that all the fingers are in the right place at the right moment. I'm on the stick with the thumb leather and all the curvy fingers and all that stuff. But you know, with the hybrid with the Franco Belgian is something that I prefer personally. And I recommend to all my students out there who is learning the violin for the first time. The Russian bow hold is a little bit of a tricky situation because you're more pronating on the violin. So if I have my pencil here and I'm going, I'm actually not, this is the Franco Belgian bow hold over here and I'm spreading my fingers out. I have all the fingers curved. The Russian bow hold, however, is pronated more like this. Many violinists in the professional world use this Russian bow hold and they use a combination of all three, again, depending on the context. So again, this in that case, the AI is right. And depending on the context and the piece and the style, you want to switch different bow holds if you have the luxury to do so. Some people just want to stick with one bow hold. Totally fine with that. And you might want to consider just sticking with one uh, just for just consistency's sake. Let's ask another question. Let's go ahead and maybe talk about intonation. 
because intonation is a big one. Let's see what the answer is when AI asks about intonation. How can a violinist achieve good intonation? Okay, good intonation on the violin is the ability to play in tune with a consistent and accurate pitch. Achieving good intonation on the violin involves several factors, including proper technique, ear training, and regular practice. Number one, proper technique. Number two, ear training. Number three, regular practice. Again, this is really, really scary that AI knows all this. Four, tuning an instrument or tuning the instrument, I should say. Number five, adjusting the sound. The sound of the violin could be adjusted by adjusting the left hand position and the bow pressure of the bow speed, which are all interrelated. Number six, vibrato, definitely a huge thing. By working for, on these factors, violins can improve their intonation and achieve a more accurate and consistent pitch. Okay, so chat GPT, you're on a roll here. You're my two cents though, is that you still can't compose music where there isn't an artificial intelligence program out there that can compose music and I think it just goes to show that we still need humans yeah we still need humans to perform we still need humans to uh, describe the music that we are performing I don't think AI is there just yet and that's good because that means I'm not out of a job okay so I have one more idea for a question for chat GPT and I want this to be a bigger, more philosophical music question. It's a very simple one. What is the meaning of music? The meaning of music can be subjective and can vary depending on one's personal experiences and cultural background. However, generally speaking, music is often thought of as a means of self-expression and communication, a way to convey emotions, ideas, and image messages. It is often used as a medium for storytelling and can evoke strong emotional responses in listeners. It can also serve as a form of entertainment and be enjoyed for its aesthetic qualities. Additionally, music can play an important role in various cultural and social contexts, such as ceremonial or religious events, and can serve as a marker of identity or cultural her heritage. Ultimately, the meaning of music can be different for everyone. It can be a source of inspiration, a way to connect with others, and a form of self-expression. Do you agree? I kind of agree. I think that it does serve important roles in various cultural and social contexts. I mean, especially in the world of classical music, that you have all sorts of cultural context about music and where it's coming from and where it came from. Leave your comments down below. Do you agree with Chad GPT on all the questions that I asked when it comes to violin or music? It's kind of scary. But it's cool. It's really cool that to have such an advanced system answer these very sophisticated and philosophical questions. You know, this I think is just uh, a stepping stone to what can potentially be an eye opener for all of us as musicians. So leave a comment down below. What do you think? I'm curious to know your thoughts. Let's have this conversation down below. And if you're new here, my name is Eric. I'm a violinist. I do music videos and violin tutorials and other violin and music related content. If you like this video, hit the like button for the algorithm, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification so that way you get notified for when new videos come out. And that's it. Catch you guys in the next one.